welcome to Reality Tea Times 2, the podcast where we discuss all the trash reality TV we love to hate. I am Tanika, and today we're going to be discussing Selling Sunset. So we're going to be doing episodes 4, 5, and 6 in this episode. So let's jump into the reason that we are here. So let's start with episode 4, which is titled... Namaste out of everyone's business. So, Chelsea and Brie, they're talking, and Chelsea apologizes for her talking shit behind Brie's back. And Chelsea says she would also like to open the door to Brie in order to have some sort of relationship. And Brie does ask, you know, what's the reason for the apology? Well, she says that, you know, my mom always said, if you don't have anything nice to say, then don't say anything. Too late, Chelsea, you already did. (laughs) And she said, I had a lot of, so I didn't have a lot of nice things to say, you know, um, she says now going forward, it won't be a topic of conversation anymore. Again, it should never have been a topic of conversation is the point that I think Brie is trying to make. But Brie does say like, I was told by Amanda that maybe you were more of the messenger that you were just saying everything that people were saying already. So, like, what's up with that? And Chelsea says, do you think people are talking, like, lately? And she, I mean, how would she know that? But then we're starting to get this kind of back and forth kind of going on between this and Amanza and Mary. So Amanza and Mary are doing hot yoga. And Amanza is telling Mary about, you know, what Chelsea said to her at her party. And we kind of go back where Chelsea is saying, like, I just feel like I was just saying what everybody was thinking. See, now that's not the same thing. That is not the same thing as I'm the mouthpiece for everybody versus I just feel like I was saying that everybody else was thinking. That's more of her just, you know, when people say shit like that, they're not actually speaking for somebody necessarily. You know what I mean? It was just, it's not the same thing. So, and let's just add in that Everyone was talking except for Mary. That's what was also said. And that everyone has an opinion about someone's life, basically. But Chelsea says that that was in the past. And Chelsea says that, you know, people definitely had comments because it was a weird situation. Understandable. But then... They got to know her, and, you know, she's not a horrible person for spreading her legs in the canon. Again, who Brie decides to fuck and have a child with is none of our business. I have no... Listen, do these women know what they're getting themselves into? Sure. But at the end of the day, my issues are with Nick. I don't give a shit. If these women want to have children and they so happen to want to have a child with Nick Cannon, then go for it then. I don't care. My issues lie with Nick Cannon. He's the one that's creating, making himself into a baby making machine. It's him. Would I choose to have a child with Nick Cannon? No, I wouldn't. Not at all. But if I decided I wanted to fuck the cannon one day and I just so happened to get pregnant in the process, just as an example, 
I'm not saying that that's the case for all these women, but just for example, that has happened to in the process, then that was a decision that I made. And that does not affect my work. That doesn't affect my friends. It doesn't really affect my family. That's a choice I made. It doesn't affect you to the point where you need to talk shit about me. You know? That's basically like, why I'm 100% on Bree's side. And I was, I'm not, I, oh, so many trees to bark on. This wasn't, this wasn't it. But the other day, Bree feels that, you know, it's not a genuine apology. She doesn't know she can accept it. Because I feel you still feel the same way that you did. Now, here's what I'll say. If Chelsea feels the way she feels, or if anyone really feels the way they feel about her situation, you can't change up for how a person feels, but you can change how you react to people about it. Because at the end of the day, what she did and how she chooses her life, she's not going to change it for you. So, if she feels that this is so out of the field and so not traditional, fine. So I can't really, I wouldn't expect Chelsea to feel differently. But it is an apology. Nonetheless, now is she apologizing because it's convenient and because everybody else likes her or whatever? That's possible. Then it's not genuine. But I don't know. I guess we'll. We'll see. Or not. Um, so yeah, she says that she doesn't. And she says, I appreciate the apology, but I don't know if I can move on forward with anything. Because you feel so strongly about my life. And that's kind of it. She leaves. So we go in the next scene. We go to the next door to the potential new office and one of the twins i can't remember who it was probably jason says you said you want more so you better deliver jesus fucking christ listen if you decide you want to open a new office then open a new office don't then say to your employees well then you better deliver more and say fuck you <laughs> who told you um chelsea says what are we thinking, really and truly? Because he starts talking about all these different amenities that they're going to have in the office. They're going to have, like, I can't even remember all the shit that he named off, but there's going to be so many different things that really, do you, do you need it? Do you need it? I don't know if you do. <laughs> um, so basically, like, is this going to be a place where they can play? And are they really going to get work done? I don't know. Anyway. So there's that. And then we see Romaine. He walks into the new office. And then Mary. This is so, so, so sweet. Oh, then Mary says, I asked him to come and to, I don't know, like measure, like, a space for maybe like a nursery for like, I don't know, me, Brie, and Heather. And Jason's like, no. But Chriselle immediately as she says it, clocks as she said, me, and is like, oh. And like, but we're waiting for the twins to catch up because they're like, no, no way, we're not doing that. And they're like, and Romain's like, I don't think he got it. And they're still, like, just kind of staring in, like, an orbit. And Romaine's like, I really don't think he got it. And then finally Jason's like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, and that's how they announced that they're having a baby. And I thought that was so sweet and so cute. It was, it was perfect. It was perfect. But, yeah, everyone's happy for them that they're going to be having a baby. So, um... I wrote, is it yes now to the nursery or, um, and then Emma, oh my God, Emma for the win for this comment, says to Jason, 
who knew that you could be so excited about a baby? Like a baby could make you smile that big. And Grishel's face is like, oh my God. Emma, why? Anyway, so then we were with Chelsea and Amanda. And Chelsea says, listen, my combo with you, I found out, go back to Brie, and she's not happy. And I'm kind of pissed. <laughs> and Amanda says, you, I told her, you know, to get kind of the heat off of you. Here's what I'm going to say, Amanda. I, I understand what Amanda is trying to do by forming this kind of peaceful environment. But she's getting so deep into this that it's just not good. Got to the point where you're just like, I'm out. Like, I'm not going to, no. And, um, yeah, so she, that's what she says. And then Chelsea says, so that she can be mad at everyone else. She's like, I told you that because I trusted you. Now I have to explain to everyone else that, you know, breathe I'm mad at them. She says, like, when you told her something that is kind of now sensitive to her, like, you know, why would you do that? Now she cares. Amanda says, I didn't know anyone else was talking before, but that's besides the point. You did eventually hear that. But anyways. And Chelsea says, you knew because you Googled her too. And yeah. Yeah. Now Amanda kind of plays dumb with this, but I think... I think she definitely did to some extent, but anyway, Chelsea, um, felt like Amanda is being kind of messy in this moment and she feels like she is kind of flip-flopping now, but then Chelsea says like, don't have ass, but you say, you know, if you're going to say something, then make sure you say everything. And go all in and you are explaining things correctly as well. And um, you know, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it at all. And then Amanda says, Yeah, how's that working for you and Brie? Oof. Then Chelsea says, just stay the fuck out of it. And Amanda says, Maybe you should too. Again, another burn. And Chelsea says that she is not anyone's business. Excuse me? How'd you get in this situation then if you were in other people's business? That doesn't make any sense. But that's what she says. Anyway. Then Amanda gets up and she walks away and that's the end of that conversation. And uh, let's continue on. So now they're not going to go along. But now we're with Rochelle and we're at our place and Emma is here with a basket of cozy stuff. She says that she, when she woke up that morning, she noticed that there was like a lot of liquid everywhere and she got really worried because she thought maybe the cyst had burst. And she ended up calling the doctor and they told her that, listen, that Sis is probably fine. You probably wouldn't know if this is burst. Like, you probably would have been in a lot of pain. But, um, she says, like, the, the doctor told her that the sis is really affecting her body in many ways, including hormonally. So, she kind of starts saying that, you know, you know, while crying, she's saying that, I just want to feel that my parents are proud of me. And she kind of is just going off on the, and I got actually very confused here. I mean, I understand what she's saying here, and I think she's very emotional that, you know, with everything kind of going on, she just wants her parents to be proud of her. But I'm also thinking, where is this coming from? I was very confused by the whole thing. But at the same time, you know, the weight of the world can feel really heavy. So maybe that's kind of what's going on. 
but I don't know. Um. Anyway, actually, now I think we're at yoga. I think I said earlier we were, yo- we were at yoga. I don't think we were, but now we are. And this is where we get the title of the episode. Namaste. Fucking stay out of everybody's business. <laughs> anyway, so now we are with Chelsea and Emma. And Emma has got a bone to pick with Chelsea because obviously Brie went to Emma and told her what Amanda had said. Um, and yeah, yeah, we're, they're starting to kind of maybe see that maybe Amanda is the problem and not so much Brie or Chelsea or anything like that. So they're kind of there saying that maybe the common denominator is Amanda in this situation, which I don't think it is, but I think Amanda, unfortunately, is kind of hearing everything and just really telling everybody everything. That's that's where I think the problem is. So back at yoga, now this is the back and forth. It's so back at yoga. We're with Amanda and Mary, and she's telling Mary kind of what happened with the conversation with Chelsea. And then back with Emma and Chelsea. She says, like, I could have, you know, told Brie that people or, or she said, I think I told I told Brie that people aren't talking now or something like that. Um, but now Amanda is shit talking, so like nothing is gonna be resolved. Like they're kind of saying, like, you you know, she's going around telling people that they need to fix things, but then she herself is making things worse. So anyway. And then one comment that's made, I think it's made by Emma, was Amanda, you can't be friends with everyone seriously you can't you can be friendly with everyone but you can't always be friends with everyone or want to make them friends with each other you know what i mean this gets too messy amanda says going forward she will not be trying to fix anyone's relationships with anyone else she is done she's learned a lesson so now we're at the new office and things need to be going quite well and we see that the twins are now i've never seen the twins argue but now they're arguing about the money that's being spent um on the renovations and they're going to be going over budget and it's because of jason i guess and brett's not happy but jason thinks that brett is just overreacting things are going to be fine you know and then the pool table that they're getting is going to cost forty thousand dollars why do you need a pool table at work <laughs> Um, but again, this is all producer driven, but anyways, what about, um, um, subleasing? This is what Brett says to Jason, like, maybe we can sublease and that way we can get some money back. Jason doesn't want to do a sublease, he wants to stick to the plan, but at the same time, he's not sticking to the plan because he's spent more money than they're supposed to be. Anyways, um, this is all stupid, this conversation, but anyways... Brett ends up leaving, um, and he says, I'm over you, and he walks out, and Jason says something about spending a down payment on something, who knows, but anyways, that is the end of episode four, so when we come back, we're going to jump into episode five. And let's go into episode five setting the stage for disaster so we are in the office and brie comes in and says heather had her baby yay great moving on my cousin's property at hills i think finally sold yay great moving on (laughs) so jason talks about a house that they got and it a 10 million dollar home and chelsea will be getting that house and nicole is going to be getting another house that they got but at oh, wait oh record scratch it's actually chris shell's it's chris shell's home that she's going to be selling and because chris shell isn't recovering from surgery nicole's going to be helping does this sound familiar this is such a bad idea but anyways 
And I wrote, no. Um, Nicole doesn't like it, obviously. And we kind of say, like, Bree's face is like, oh, shit. <laughs> Mary says, I would say, fuck you, Jason. I'm really, really, I, I actually agree here. So, yeah, so Chelsea got that house at the, the, the she's been doing really, really well. And it's a $10 million listing, like I said. But Brie, you know what? You had a really slow start. So we're going to give you this $5.5 million listing instead. Okay, ladies, go do your shit. <laughs> Brie is not happy. And we kind of see Chelsea kind of being like, I'll win. And it's like, no, Chelsea, don't, don't. You're doing so well. I understand that Brie doesn't want to accept your apology or anything. But can you understand why she doesn't want to accept it? You're proving her point. Anyway. So, then we're with Rochelle. We're on Rose. And here comes Emma. And she has done the surgery, so everything's good. And then Chelsea's here as well. So, Chelsea's going to be cooking some dumplings and different kinds of dumplings. And we do find out the surgery was a success. Great. Perfect. So... And so we find out from both Emma and Grish and Chelsea drama. She's so drama. And Grishelle doesn't think Amansa is purposely trying to do anything like intentional or anything like that. But you know, maybe she's getting really caught up in stuff. Which again, yeah, she definitely is. So let's talk about listings, y'all. And uh we do find out that the uh, you know, Rochelle, you you got one, but wait, there's one little one little thing, and that is that you know Nicole's gonna be helping, <laughs> and Rochelle is um just like oh ooh, <laughs> this isn't this happened before, why are we doing this again? And they said I think Jason is trying to like maybe extend an olive branch on your behalf, <laughs> but Rochelle does say you know what I am ready to apologize. But now this is happening, so I don't know, like, how this is going to go. Um, but the dumplings looked really good. So there's that. So now we're with Brie and Emma. And what the fuck is happening is what I wrote. Because they're at this, like, gym, and there's, like, these rollers. And they're sitting on the rollers, but I think it has a different effect than what it's supposed to have. Like, they keep saying, you know, maybe I need to have one of these for my home. <laughs> something you know but um i think they do finally figure out what it's supposed to be for but it's supposed to be for their calves and it's nowhere near their calves so i don't know um then they end up going to the treadmill instead because that's safe but this treadmill looks so cool it's not the kind of gym that i go to but anyway emma and chelsea want to oh sorry emma thinks that chelsea wants to be Bree's friend that's what Chelsea, uh, Emma tells Brie. But Brie says, but why? When everyone else is good with me, that's when she decides she wants to be my friend? It's fair assessment. Anyway, that's kind of it there. Um, and then we're at another listing with Brett and Chelsea and Brie, Mary, and also Emma. So let's go explore this crazy house. So they're doing that. Um... The dude here says, you know, you might get lost, so if you do, just text me. That's how big this house is, I guess. And then they kind of just going around, and he says to them, listen, if y'all sell this house, you can get this car, that car, that car, that car, along with your commission. It's yours. Don't. You get it. Fuck. I'm in the wrong business. Jesus. Um. So then Bree takes the opportunity to talk to Brett about what he said at the meeting because I rubbed her the wrong way, obviously, but Brett feels that she has had a slow start. That's just how it is. Um, but I wrote, she has a baby, but that doesn't matter. They don't care. Um, she said, all this is going to do is just make me bigger and better. And that's all you can do. Anyway, so Chelsea and Amanda, they're meeting up. Um, someone's going to say, this is a big trigger warning. I will put a timestamp in the episode. This whole conversation 
is going to be just a big trigger warning, and that's going to be involving child molestation, um, rape, uh, mental abuse, the whole nine yards. Is, this is what it is. And again, I will put that in the show notes. So starting now. So um, Chelsea decided that she wanted to be the one to meet up. So basically what happened and maybe what prompted this meeting is that Chelsea saw a post that Amanda did on Instagram. We don't know exactly what the post is, but having to probably do with a lot of the things that she dealt with in her life. She says, so I was raised by my mom and my stepdad. And she says, me being the only half black, but being half black, I was the only black person in my home. Um, and her stepdad and his father, so his, her, cause her step granddad or whatever, they were both pedophiles. And she says that she was molested by both of them. Um, she thinks that the last time would have been when she was about 11, I believe is what she said. And, um, fuck. She says that her mom was mentally abusive to her. And she says, I never told my mom what was going on because she didn't really have a safe, safe place to do that. Not to mention, she says that weirdly enough, my stepdad was a better parent than she was, even though he was molesting me. But that was once in a while. My mom's mental abuse towards me was every day. So she knew, I guess, that if she told her mom what was happening, number one, she might not have done anything. And this reasoned her more. Or if she did do something, it would have somehow become her fault. Probably. And then not to mention, she wouldn't have had a reprieve from her mom's mental abuse as well. That is a hard, hard life to live. I can't even imagine. So Amanda says that she doesn't always have it all figured out. Um, she says, I do have my bad days. And Chelsea says that she has always put on a face and been a good, you know, person, put on a pretty picture. Because as a black girl, that is what we are told we have to do. And I felt this so hard. I felt this. Actually, I was a little emotional with this because it's true. As a black woman, not even a black man, but a black woman, that's what you're told to do. That's what you feel like you have to do. They do kind of make up here. So kind of on a shared thing here, but yeah. So we were in Nicole's. I mean, Chriselle's <laughs> listing. And here comes Jason. And he also comes with Grishel. And Nicole goes into a little corner and just sits there. But Grishel is hesitant, obviously. And she does say, listen, if this is Nicole's listing, that's okay. If it's my listing, then it has to be on my listing. And Jason says, no, this is your listing. I know like, you're the right person to sell this. Because again, didn't mention, this was actually a house that Chriselle wanted to buy. It didn't work out. So Chriselle does take the opportunity to apologize to Nicole for her part in things. Nicole does thank her, but Nicole, where is your apology? Because guess what? She doesn't apologize back to her. She basically just says... All right, well, I'm, I've done my thing. I've helped. I'm gone. And she walks out to the, the, the door, basically, without an apology to Chriselle. Where's your apology to her, Nicole? I don't understand. Now, we will get a little insight as to where Nicole was thinking, which I did actually think in the moment as well. It's in the next episode. But I was like, you could have still tried because then you not only look bad to Chriselle, but you also looked bad to Jason. Even if you didn't mean it, you could have tried. But she didn't. And it just makes you look 
ten times worse than Griselle does now. But that's it for episode five. We're going to jump into episode six, which is a lot shorter. There's not a whole lot to talk about in episode six, but we're going to jump into episode six when we come back. So let's hop into the final episode we're covering in this podcast, episode six. It's not the size of the listing. It's also not the size of this episode because I did not have much to talk about here. But so we are at Chelsea's open house and here comes Emma and Amanda and then Nicole. So Nicole you know, thinks that she might have someone for this listing, but you know what? They want more of a turnkey. The fuck? Every one of these houses are turnkey. What are you talking about? But Shannon says, well, you know what? More like, you know, new. Man, that's not turnkey. Something can be older, it'll be turnkey. I'm not a real estate agent and I know this. Are you okay, ma'am? Ugh. Anyway, so anyway, we are now with this was I loved this scene. It was so cute. We're with G and Grishelle and Amanda. So G has bought a studio for themselves and Amanda is gonna be coming to design it for them. Great. So there's like these big like blights that are balls and Amanda's like, I don't think you're really fond about having balls in your face. And she's like, I haven't really had balls in my face in a really long time. So no, <laughs> but that was pretty funny. And then we start kind of rocking out in this kind of music session. And it was really cute. And we're like, it's gonna be dope. <laughs> it was so cute. But again, don't really have much else to say about the scene. Um, I just, I, I really like G. I really like them. I think they're perfect for Grishel, honestly. And as long as Grishel's getting everything that she wants, I don't care as long as the person that she is with fully fulfills her. And I think she does. So. Yeah. So now we're with Mary and Nicole. And Mary is, she says she's doing good. She's nauseous sometimes, but she's good. And Nicole says, says you know, well, Grishel did apologize. But does this feel genuine? Because, well, Jason was there. And I said, yeah, I felt that. I felt in the moment while watching the episode that I'm like, oh, Grishel, don't do it in front of Jason. It doesn't look good that you're doing it in front of Jason for Nicole. I know it doesn't. I don't condone that, but I, <laughs> I knew it was going to be a problem for her. Um, but Nicole does admit to Mary that she herself did not apologize. So Mary says, oh shit, like literally says, oh shit in the moment. And Mary says that, you know, Chriselle did apologize. Like she, she did try, but she does feel like Nicole should have maybe tried as well. But Nicole just makes excuses for herself and says, I just felt that she wouldn't have done it if Jason was not there. Listen, I think she would have. She doesn't need Jason there. She does not need Jason there to be her backup person or whatever the fuck. Like she doesn't need that. I 100% think that she would have, but I understand from Nicole's perspective why she thinks that. I do get it. So, um, Nicole does then say, you know what, maybe I should have tried. I don't know. Did I miss an opportunity to apologize? I don't know. But she says, like, if the opportunity does present itself again to apologize, that she will. So, I guess we'll see. Then with Rochelle and Nikki, Nikki Glazer, she's back. And 
Nikki, we see her kind of like saving a bee from a pool. <laughs> it was wholesome. Um, and she says, you know, maybe we'll go right back into the pool. Who knows? And then they go to one of the primary suites. And it's kind of off like a balcony. And she says, it's going to get really loud in here with crying and sex. I mean, yeah. So uh, then we start talking about the drama with Skeptic Malou. Because both of them talked about really since it happened. And um, Nikki says, well, what's going to happen? Because, honey, you're not going anywhere. And that's true. Jason will always pick Chriselle, even if Chriselle doesn't pick him. Jason will always pick Chriselle over anyone else. Until he finds someone else that maybe he loves just as much as Chriselle. As much as he loved Chriselle. So, I think Nikki's 100% right. And then we just start making fun of Jason and his choices in dating um, children. Anyway, moving on. Then we are with Chelsea and Jason and another large listing. And that there there's a photo booth in this house. And she somehow, like, I guess the photo booth is password protected. And she somehow breaks the passcode and just they end up taking pictures in the photo booth. And she she broke it by doing one, two, three, four, five, six. And She's like, if I could break the code, like, I guess, like, this house isn't really protected. And he's like, I feel like you can break into any house with one, two, three, four, five, six. So then we are at Mary's house. And guys, trigger warning for pregnancy loss. This is going to be for the duration of the rest of this episode. So, um, the rest of episode six. Um, but I will put a timestamp in the show notes. So yes, trigger warning starting now. So I wrote, you could just feel the difference with Mary and Romaine. And um, I hate it. I hate it for them so much. And uh, we find out, I think Manza came actually with some food for them. And we find out that they went to get an ultrasound done. They were going to be listening to the heartbeat and finding out the gender. And as the technician was starting to do the ultrasound, she could see their face and that their face changed. And I guess the technician decided, let's do a transvaginal ultrasound instead to get a better view. But Mary could just tell. And she said, is there a heartbeat? And the technician said, no, that there was no heartbeat. <sighs> um, and, oh God, I, I, I feel for her. I, I, I have never once dealt with pregnancy loss myself, but it's probably one of my biggest fears. And, I just don't know how I would handle that mentally. And it's... It, uh, I just you know, felt so happy for both of them. And then how quickly that just changed. And I... I oof, my heart goes out to both of them. And, you know, Mary kind of says, like, I don't know what the timeline is on getting over this. And I said, there's no timeline. There's no timeline. Just, I don't know if you really ever get over it. But, or, you know, you, you learn to live, I guess, with the fact that it happened. I, I don't even know. But just give yourself grace. I don't know who needs to hear this. But just give yourself grace. And be patient with yourself. I don't want to say every day gets easier, but you learn to cope, I guess. I guess. Um, 
But um, Romaine just basically says that um, because Amanda asks him, like, how are you doing? Which I think, again, we tend to always kind of forget, like, the woman, yes, is the one who's physically going through it. And obviously also mentally and emotionally, but they forget the man also goes through it as well. And in in their way. So I really did love that Amanda asked him as well. But he says, I think I feel like most men who loves their wife or girlfriend or fiance or whoever and cares about them more than themselves. He says the, the right thing. And he just says, I want to make sure she's okay before I make sure I'm okay. And I thought that was, yeah. Maybe you need to still take care of your mental health as well. But I definitely understood what he was saying. But that is it for episode six. We unfortunately ended off really badly with this episode, but um, that's it for her this episode. So if you like what you heard, please rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. Um, And you can rate a review on either Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And I have a new thing that I want to start trying. And that is that every four or five star review that we get, I'll read it on the podcast. So if you want to hear your review on the podcast, please rate and review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you're able to rate and review. Um, And if you want to connect with us, you can do so by going to Reality Tea Times 2 on Facebook Reality Tea Times 2 podcast on Instagram or threads, Reality Tea Times 2 pod on Twitter. You can also find us on Reddit at Reality Tea Times 2 pod. And uh, you can also email us at Reality Tea Times 2 at hotmail.com. And don't forget, you can find us on YouTube at Reality T Times 2. You can also subscribe, like, comment on there as well. We greatly appreciate that. And don't forget that I do have another podcast with my friend Mikkel called Next Take Podcasts, where we talk about all kinds of different things. Um, we currently have... You know, this number can definitely change, but we currently have about eight episodes. Um, Roughly, we've talked about all kinds of different things. We have a lot of fun over there. So please go take a listen to us over at Next Take Podcast, which you can find us at on YouTube at Next Take Podcast. You can also find us on our website, solo.to forward slash Next Take Podcast. And don't forget, we have a website, and that is at solo.to forward slash reality t times two. And we also have a Discord, and I believe that's reality t times two as well. So you can find us there. Um, but that's basically it. That's all the stuff. Of course, everything here will that I've just listed will be in our show notes, all discount codes. Um Special links to everything that we put in our ads are also in our show notes. And yeah, that's basically it, guys. Thanks so much. Bye.